welcome to episode number 37 of the Introvert Biz Growth Podcast, the show where I talk to introverts who grow their business and make a difference. I'm Sarah Sinecroce, your host, and so happy that you're again spending this time with me today. Today I'm talking to Laura Payne Stanley. But before I introduce you to Laura, I want to give a quick shout out to Connie, who left me a wonderful review on iTunes. Thanks so much, Connie. These reviews really mean a lot to me. And so if you too would like to support this show, you have several options. The first one is leaving a review on iTunes, which is free, but helps the show be seen, you know, be, make it more visible to more introverts. So just go over to iTunes or maybe you're listening to this on Stitcher. They have a review option as well and leave me a review. Uh, the second option is to support me with a pledge on Patreon by going to saracenacroce.com forward slash Patreon, where you can make uh, even just a small contribution of $1 per month. That really makes a difference to me because I know that somebody cares and encourages me to continue this show. And then finally, you can sign up to one of the upcoming events I put together for introverts. You might have heard last month's event was the video for introverts I put together. And for now, there's the retreat in Sicily, which you can check out at sarasantacroce.com forward slash retreat. And that's happening next May, May 2018. Or if Italy is a bit far for you, I'll host another seven day training at the end of October together with my friend Kat Rose from The Creative Introvert around the topic of pitching for introverts. So more info about that in the next episode. I don't have the sales page yet. But now back to Laura. Laura is a serial entrepreneur, including award-winning wedding blogger and NLP coach and hypnotherapist. She has perfected the art of harnessing her natural introverted personality traits to create a thriving business empire and now works with other entrepreneurs to do the same. We had a great conversation around the topic of limiting beliefs, diversity of revenue streams, weddings, and Laura's big aha moment when her and her husband both got made redundant at the same time. So now, without further ado, here's my interview with Laura Payne Stanley. Hi, Laura. How are you today? I'm great, Sarah. How are you doing? I'm awesome. Thank you so much. It's Friday and I have a date planned with my hubby. So I'm looking forward to that. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> yes. Laura, tell us a bit about yourself. Um, something that, you know, the introverts listening to this podcast can relate to you, something about your background and what you're doing today in your business. Um, one of the things about being an introvert is just before coming onto this podcast, I've been doing some filming today and I've been doing a lot of in-person work. And as an introvert, we really know how much we expend energy when we're doing these things. And it's not like I hate it like I used to do, but you really do expend so much energy. You have to kind of include that part of the day that goes, how am I going to recoup my energy from what I've just done? Mm -hmm. um, so it's so important as an introvert to kind of include that into your process of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very true. I, I gave a training this morning and I came home and I like I had to take a nap. I was so exhausted. Yeah. So I can totally relate to that. Yeah. Tell us a bit about, you know, what it is you do and have you always worked online? You know, you, you were a wedding blogger. So tell us about that and then how you transitioned or maybe you've always done both than NLP coaching and hypnotherapy so tell us a bit about that I I still have my wedding blog so I've been doing that for six years now wow and that started as some side hustle from a job at the time and it was a really great way for especially for an introvert to go into the world of online business um, I actually set up with a pseudonym as well because uh, the field I was working in with marketing it was very, very difficult to have two kind of profiles. So I actually have a pseudonym that I've written under for many, many years. And it's a really kind of nice way to have a little bit of coverage as you're an introvert, kind of feeling your way into business. Mm -hmm. um, so that started six years ago. Now today, we now have, there's me, I'm kind of editor-in-chief, and I have three assistants. 
who help me manage running the blog on a regular basis as we've grown and grown and grown. So I still have that part of the business. And what happened was because I'm in touch with an awful lot of wedding suppliers and my background's in marketing and business, what happened was people were asking me for advice and how to market their business, how to actually manage their business, how to get exposure. And it kind of had just had a natural evolution. And when I was starting to do the work, you notice really quite often and really early in the process that how many times we need to kind of go back a stage. It isn't about the tactics. It isn't about which magazine to advert, advertise in or what email sequence to send. Often there can be limiting beliefs and there can be other underlying narratives and scripts that we often address in order for that person to have the success that they wish. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how it evolved and how I became an NLP coach and a hypnotherapist. That's so interesting. Wow. <laughs> because first hand, you would think those two have nothing to do together. You know, <laughs> like how did this happen? But it's, it is very true. And in fact, it's funny because just last week I sent out an email to my list promoting a free webinar with, um, I don't know if you've heard of her, Denise Duffel thomas Oh, yes, yes. Definitely. So with the, with the whole idea about money blocks, right? Mm -hmm. and, and those are also limiting beliefs. So Absolutely. It, it's so true that in business, all our background, all our upbringing, all these limiting beliefs it truly kind of can hold us back from doing what we're really meant to be doing. So very interesting. So, so you kind of took a training in uh, NLP and so, so now you still have the wedding blog, but you're also a coach, an LLP coach, but, but for business owners? Yeah. So um, how it transitioned, I'm, an, I'm a certified NLP coach. So there's NLP practitioner, an NLP coach, I'm a certified NLP coach. And then at the end of the year, I'm becoming a certified master coach as well. And I now work with business owners, often entrepreneurs. I do work with people one-on-one -on -one as life coaching as well, but it's much more about emergent coaching. And that's kind of a field, it's a different field than many people think of because we work through whatever issues are coming up. So when I work with people, one-on-one -on -one entrepreneurs, we can start by working that they want to launch a new business. And when we start working together, we have to look at the limiting beliefs, their relationship with money, their money blocks, um, what we call their money story. And so we look in an emergent kind of coaching space how to actually facilitate that person to have the success that they want, looking at many different areas. Mm, wow, that's very interesting. So most, most of your clients are business owners or online business owners? Absolutely. And most mm. of them um, are introverts. Uh, I would say I have a small proportion of clients who are actually extroverts. Many people like me, which are, I would actually say I'm an extroverted introvert. Mm. So when, when I say to people I'm an introvert, they say, no, you're not. You love to talk. And sometimes it's when you get working with people, it's really interesting for them to actually understand what an extrovert is and what an introvert is. Yeah. And being able to switch up when you need to, but also being able to use your skills and your strengths, whether you are an introvert or an extrovert, to actually help you grow your business. Yeah, so true. Well, there, there's that term ambivert, and I, I'm definitely an ambivert because ah. it's, it's the same for me. Is like people sometimes don't realize that I'm an introvert because mm -hmm. I can fake to be an extrovert if I have to. Yeah, and yeah, that's so that's why uh, you know, this term ambivert came up, where it's like, yeah, I can be a little bit of this, but how I know that I'm an introvert is, is because it exhausts me when I have to fake to be an extrovert. <laughs> so, yes. uh, yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Okay. So you told us about, you know, the coaching. So you do that online or in person? Um, both. Most of my clients, we work together one-to-one -one via Skype. Okay. So although I'm an introvert, I do like to see people because it's part of the coaching process. And uh, I can talk about with NLP, we have representational systems, which is how you view the world. So I look often at people's visual, what their body language is telling me and what their energy is telling me. So mm -hmm. we work on my Portland program, we work together on a Skype basis. And I also do a lot of one-to-one -one work as well. Um, not, not a huge amount because as an introvert, if I do too many of them, my energy expenditure kind of sinks a little bit. So I do kind of manage how many one-to-one -one person stuff that I do in person. Mm -hmm. throughout the month 
Mm -hmm. So, so do you have any other revenue streams like programs or online or group coaching programs or things like that? Have you experimented with that? As the wedding blog, um, we make money through affiliate links, direct to consumer, mm-hmm. bespoke packages, right. consultancy work often as well, whether it's for bloggers. Also, I've done some speaking. Again, don't do too many of those as an introvert. I'll kind of limit how many I'm doing of those. And I've just got my first group program launching as the coaching. So that's just launching soon, which is going to be really interesting as well. It's a six week group program. Um, and we're looking at people charging their worth. So the limiting beliefs about how much people charge and raising their rates and feeling truly comfortable with the price points that they have to actually attract people they want to work with. Nice. Okay. So, so yeah, it's really interesting that you have those two businesses where yeah, the tactics are, or the, the, the strategies are very different. You mentioned affiliate marketing, you know, on, on the wedding blog, I'm sure that works really well because it's all online based. And so you get these, you know, wedding uh, providers or whatever. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not in the wedding business, but I'm sure there's tons of little things that you could sell and promote and, and then get an affiliate commission. Right? Absolutely. And it's one of the reasons in terms of one of my whys is about having such a diverse range of revenue streams. Mm-hmm. Spreads the risk out. So it depends what's happening in the world and political environment. You're much less susceptible um, for you know all eggs in one basket you don't have to have because you've got such diverse revenue streams. Mm-hmm. And as we all know, especially in the online world, someone changes an algorithm somewhere. And if you're dependent on that revenue stream and the algorithm suddenly puts you out, if that's all, you know, your whole most of your revenue streams based on that, you have to adapt very quickly in order to not take a reduction in your revenue. Whereas when you have a diverse portfolio, then you can you know, look and see what's coming in the marketplace and what you need to adapt ahead of time. And if something comes out of the blue, you can normally stomach it that little bit better. Yeah, I'm sure people keep getting married, so that's pretty yeah. safe. <laughs> there's, there's, yes, absolutely. And France is such a beautiful place to get married, which is where I target. So it's, yeah, it's, it's always a place people want to go. Okay. Oh, so you're targeting France specifically? Yes. Yeah. It's okay. destination weddings in France that we look at. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, unfortunately, I'm sure there's also a big business to be made with divorces. So, because <laughs> those keep happening too. <laughs> it's very, very true. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe some, someone, well, I'm sure somebody already came up with that idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry for my dark humor there. Um, I'm happily married, so it's, <laughs> they won't get my business. No, it's very true, though. <laughs> Let's switch gears a bit and talk about your uh, introverted superpowers. What do you think is one of uh, one of your biggest strengths as an introverted entrepreneur? I think one of my biggest strengths, um, and it's really interesting. I had to sit and think about this. Is my insatiable curiosity. Mm. So I'm always curious. I'm always looking to explore. So whether it's a new idea, a new revenue stream, a new concept, a new tactic, um, a new dream that I might have had, how to make it into reality, this curiosity, yeah. is, it's a really lovely place to, and a light place to live in because you're, you're constantly curious. How can you make things better? How can you change things? How can you evolve? And it's a really lovely place to live in because Failure isn't failure. It's just an, another chance to get curious. Right. Success isn't success. You're just another place to get curious again. And that's kind of, I think, one of my key strengths is how I view the world. New opportunities, new places to get curious. Yeah. Yeah. I think if we're not curious anymore, there's no more hope. There's no more, yeah, yeah there's no more future, really. It's yeah. funny because I'm staring at this painting. I sometimes paint a little bit and it has my my feelings. How do I want to feel? Danielle Laporte um, has a, cool. kind of a program uh, about how you want to feel. And so uh, curious is one of the words. Ah, there. So yeah. yeah, I'm not, I don't know if that's like a specific introverted trait, but, but yeah, I can definitely relate. It's right yeah. there. on. on See, I think where I, ta- what I definitely think with introverts, it has a really great power is to actually look at how you can be curious as an introvert and actually change your business to work for you as an introvert. Right. So when we see different tactics or um, launches coming out or people, you know, broadcasting, publicizing things in a certain way, if we're really insatiably curious as an introvert, what we can do is say, okay, that works great, but how can it work for me? Mm-hmm. 
How can I evolve it, change it, tweak it, soften the edges? How can I do all those things? So whatever I'm seeing, I can adapt for me. Yeah, so true. Knowing our energy and knowing the limits of our energy and, and all of that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. What about the flip side? There's, you know, there's always strengths and then there's challenges or weaknesses. What do you think is kind of limiting for you as an introvert? Um, see, again, I, it's, it's kind of this extrovert introvert thing. So it's actually quite interesting because we're doing a podcast. One of my weaknesses I have is as within an NLP, as I mentioned, we talk about representational systems and I have a high V and a K and a V is basically how you visually see the world. And a K is the energetic, the kinesthetic of something. So I really struggle when I can't see people. Mm. <laughs> so <laughs> this is more the irony of doing it on a podcast. I really struggle because I, I, I can't interpret someone. Okay. And it's a little bit for me as a weakness. I feel like I'm doing it with my hands time behind my back. I don't like phone calls. Right. But I can look at the tonality of someone's voice and kind of see how that might work and trying to, you know, make kind of conjecture. But when I can see someone, when I can actually, and it doesn't have to be an engaged in a conversation with someone, but when I can actually see someone, I kind of, I can read a little bit better. I can see their energy. I can see what's going on. So, and in a way, sometimes as a weakness as an introvert, if, if I can't see someone and I'm on the phone with an extrovert, I, I, that energy balance is a real almost discomfort for me sometimes. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. I've had other people, other guests on the podcast say that they don't like uh, phone calls and that was you know one ah. of the, the challenges. But I've, they've never explained, and I agree, I don't like phone calls either, but I've never realized that that might be the reason is that we don't yeah, we don't get their energy or we don't see how they're reacting. And so that kind of, yeah, that destabilizes us. We don't know how to react to that. So. Yeah. And if, if people have a, if, if people have a high audio, so people, some people just love to live in the audio world. And so in essence, like turning off cameras and things is can be great because they're just listening. Um, and, and whether this is an introvert and extrovert, because we can have both traits, but it is so interesting to realize where we kind of interpret Right. So it's funny because even I'm still moving my hands around as I'm talking because I'm such a visual person how I talk and how I express and communicate with things. Um, so yeah, it's, it can be a real weakness, especially if you put me on the phone. Um, that definitely, as you said, as past guests have said, then that really does make me uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. For me, it's also the 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 fact that I can't prepare. <laughs> you know, <laughs> in an email, I can think about half hour what am I going to say to make yes. sure that it sounds right. Uh, in a phone call, it's just so spontaneous that I'm like caught off guard and, and they ask me, so how much is this going to cost? I'm like, well, let me think about it. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, there's definitely the preparation involved yeah. where you just on the, you, you can't do any just on the call. Yeah. Great. Well, take us, uh, Laura, take us to a, a, an aha moment where, you know, you realize something, maybe it about your introversion or maybe something that has to do with NLP. Take us to a moment in time where you have this big aha. So my big aha is actually um, on a balcony in a suite in a hotel in Key West. And so I was there on honeymoon with my husband. And a month before we got married, I was made redundant from my job. Uh, no, basically a no warning, didn't know this was coming. Um, my employer was actually involved in, in so my line manager was actually invited to my wedding. So I had no clue that this was coming. Mm. Then two weeks later, then my husband's job he, um, where he worked went into administration. So there we were sat in Key West on this balcony having some champagne and we had not a job between the two of us mm. as you know, a newly married couple sat there going, Okay, this, this is how you dream a starting married life with not any income between the two of us. And the aha moment was we were sat there and had that decision that at no point again with our future did we want to leave it to a place where all the eggs were in one basket and we had no control of what was coming up. Because mm -hmm. in that split second, you know, two people, three people, four people in companies made the decision, obviously not not coincidingly but made the decision that had a serious impact on our future and we made the decision that our harm moment going no now we want to have some kind of control going forward right and you know then you have the, the you know getting ready for interviews and as you're doing that and I think the introverted part of the ha ha moment was when you sit there and you're you know looking at business ideas 
And when you realize you have a whole list of business ideas and you're going, okay, none of these have extroverted traits. Most of them had introverted traits. How do I sell online? How do I do this? How do I do this? It wasn't in a realm that I was ever wanting to be that extrovert. Um, and that was really interesting because then you sit there with a, basically a clean sheet of paper going, okay, how do I build a business for an introvert? with a clean sheet of paper, no kind of rules, no, no, no anything, what, what am I gonna do? And it's that aha moment, and multiple revenue streams, and all the things that I wanted to be in there, was really sad, I mean, don't worry, it was a beautiful location, but as you're sad, <laughs> no money coming in between two newlyweds. Yeah. It's, it was a complete aha moment shift, the energy just shifted. Right. As you make the decision, make the decision kind of work for yourselves. So is your husband working with you in the company? He is now. And this is um, actually one of my biggest things I'm grateful for in last month is my husband technically retired from his corporate job. So after that, when we got back to the UK, he then found another job. And so, yeah, uh, um, just under a month ago, he quit his job and he's now kind of retired. I wouldn't say he's playing golf every day or anything, but he, um, <laughs> <laughs> he might want to. <laughs> but no, he, he, um, he works. He does a lot of technology for the company. So now he's re you know, retired from his corporate job, had left that, and now he's working with me in the businesses and does all of the IT, the infrastructure, the sales funnels, all of the, he always has for a, a number of times a side hustle, and now he gets to do it as a full-time basis. Nice. So it's, you know, the evolution of us sitting there on a balcony with no jobs to now, you know, having our own businesses, multiple ones, both of us working for ourselves, having a team as well, is is glorious so, you know it's it is that reward and that dream that you you imagine when i was sat on that balcony and now it's here so yeah absolutely hugely grateful that he's been able to quit his job that's nice yeah and it, it really kind of yeah it, it's it's really creating success on your own terms it's like you know it's my show i run it nobody yeah. gets to tell me that i can't show up tomorrow anymore yeah and i don't know if you know if that's an introversion trait either but I do feel that since we're more in our heads and we don't need so much instructions from other people, maybe maybe we do make better entrepreneurs than, than extroverts who kind of you know rely on other people's input and, and rely a lot of a lot of times on an, much more on a team maybe to to kind of give them this this feedback and give them credit and, and things like that. It's, it's such an interesting point, Sarah, because when I work with introverts and extroverts, seeing the different skill sets that different people can have um, of external validation and the whole process of idea creation and to implementation, in my experience personally, it does vary across introverts and extroverts. Of course. Where the kind of validation of the idea before we go forward. It, it is really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think, it, you know, maybe I'll add that into my strength as well, that being an introvert means that when I could quite happy to go after ideas, quite happy to create something without anyone telling me that it, it could be done or couldn't be done. It's that tenacity again, isn't it? To go, okay, <laughs> I want to do this. How am I going to do it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's very interesting. Great. Let's, let's uh, talk about some golden nuggets. One kind of feature that I always like to ask my guests is, is about personal habit, a resource and a book. So let's start with the personal habit. What do you do on a regular basis that you think has contributed to your success? One of the things and with my VOP clients and with the groups I work with, they know this about me is I love mornings. I absolutely love mornings. I'm a morning person energy, but I have a morning routine. <clears throat> and the interesting thing is my morning routine starts the night before. So, you know, for me, one of the success patterns has been, you know, seeing how, the, and bear in mind there's a team as well, seeing how not just the week, but the month is planning out. And the reason I say it starts the night before is the whole next day is planned and sits on my desk. So when I leave my office that night, I can leave the office in the office. Because I think as well as introverted entrepreneurs, quite often we can take our work with us, like mindfully when we're doing other activities. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the success things has been being able to leave the office in the office, to go and do something else, to be 100% fully present when I'm doing something else. And then when my morning routine starts, when I get to the section of my morning, when I'm starting work, it's all laid out what I'm doing. I hit the ground running with maximum energy 
I don't sit there. What am I doing today? What's on the agenda? What do I need to manage and sort out? Yeah. yeah. And it, I honestly believe it's such a critical point to start your day the right way with the right energy. I don't check emails first thing because I, I only check emails twice a day. Wow. Um, so, and yeah. <laughs> You're and, good. Yeah. I'm still struggling with that one. <laughs> okay. Turn off your send receive. My send receive isn't on automatic. So unless I press send receive, right. don't get them. Um, because then it means when I press send receive, it's when I'm ready to receive, to actually do my emails. It's in the schedule. Right. Otherwise, you know, notifications, distractions kind of literally can bing at you, can't they, throughout the whole time. Um, and you become very easily distracted. And especially for introverts, I think when there's so much stimuli, such as emails and you know, lights and buzzers and everything blinking, telling us what's going on in the social media world, sometimes that can become really overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I, I think what you said is really important. It's 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 both things. Yes, start your day and go right into things, but also end your day by writing down your MITs and most important tasks for the next day so that you can really turn off and, and yes. say, okay, this is it. After, I don't know, 7 p.m., I'm not you know doing anything related to business anymore. Yeah. And again, it's when we do that, we can be 100% present. So whether we're with, with our partner, our husband, our wife, our kids, we can actually be 100% present because part of us isn't thinking, oh, did I write that on the list? Or should I be doing that? Oh, I must remember to do that in the morning. Yeah, yeah. And it can give us a real peaceful sense because we can actually just focus on what we're doing. Yeah. Did you have a specific tool that maybe is related to that, to you know, keeping your calendar? Or do you want to share another tool that you're using? Um, yeah, I mean, I really do love kind of internet apps and gadgets and things, especially being a blogger. We use many of them. So the first one I wrote down was if this, then that. Mm, yeah. So, you know, if, if no one knows what that is in simple terms, it's a way that you can automate a lot of things. So even if you're not a blogger, but you have a blog, you know, pre-scheduling things such as as soon as a new blog post launches, it can go to Twitter and your Instagram and different things. Save so much time. You don't even need to outsource it. You can just set up the rules yourself. And it saves so much time. So that's one of the first internet resources I just think is genius. Yeah. I would also mention Zapier, which is yeah. the same thing, but yes. uh, yeah, same thing, but yeah. different, different uh, app. Yeah. And uh, the last one that I just put up in Zapier is, what was it again? Oh yeah. When someone schedules, like you scheduled a podcast interview, yes. it automatically creates uh, a meeting on Zoom. So it creates the link and it then sends you the link for that uh, meeting in uh, because I'm using Acrity uh, for scheduling. So but these things are genius, aren't they? Just I know. It's like, wow, you just <laughs> saved me 15 minutes, you yeah. know, by just setting that up once. And now whenever somebody schedules an interview, it's done. So, yeah. Yeah. And often we kind of think about outsourcing and sometimes we don't even need to outsource. We can no. just set up these rules for ourselves and yeah. Yeah, it just save so much time. Yeah, it's great. All right. What about a book? Um, I'm just in the literally at the end point of reading, surely you're joking, Mr. Feynman by Richard Feynman, the, and it's just awesome. It's such a really, it's a different type of book for me, but it's really, really interesting. It's about the Nobel Laureate. And what I love about it, he has this unquenchable curiosity, which is uh, probably why I resonate with it so much. Mm -hmm. But the kind of, un, you know, it, it's a true story, but the underlying theme, which I love about it, it's about living the world from your perspective. Mm -hmm. So, and especially as an introvert, I think being comfortable with being an introvert and changing the world to be successful for you as an introvert, rather than feeling uncomfortable trying to be an extrovert when that's not your natural state, it realizes a whole new world to you and how we can be hugely successful when we just are literally true to ourselves yeah. and you know, manage our lives, manage our world, manage our businesses with kind of our ethos at the center and our ethos at the core. Um, so yeah, it's a great book. It's completely different than I normally read, but it's really, really interesting. Nice. Okay. I'll make sure to put the link in the show notes so people can definitely go check that out. And I oh. will, because I haven't, um, I don't think it's on my Kindle list. So I'm <laughs> at it. <laughs> great. Well, this has been a great conversation. Thanks so much Thank for you. I am Laura. Um, I always end with a mindful ending. You already shared about your husband. Is there anything else that you would like to mention that you're grateful for right now? Um, one of the really interesting things, so 
is that as we're recording this in, in the UK, we've just had the elections. We've just had the general elections. And no matter what your political affiliation is, I'm so grateful, so, so grateful to live in a country where men and women can vote, where we can actively have freedom of speech across social media, across you know, friends, family, people are having this discussion. And I'm so, so grateful for that because it's so easy sometimes to forget that the privilege and the journey that so many people went on for enable us to have this that I'm just, I'm so grateful. And even when you get into heated debates about it, you know, in, in the weeks that just happened, there is this huge gratitude for being able to have those debates, for being able to have the chance to vote. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I think that you're right. Oftentimes we just take it for granted and then we get mm, yeah. down into s silly little details about who we're voting for. Yeah. Where uh, you're right, we should just be grateful that we're allowed to vote. Yeah, and we have freedom of speech, which, you know, is just a beautiful thing. And again, the gratitude for that is just, I think, overwhelming that you can post these things on social media. You can have active debate and discussion. Yeah, yeah. Well, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much for taking the time and sharing your wisdom and your tips and strategies. Thanks again, Laura, for being on the show. Thank you so much, Sarah. That's it for this episode of the Introvert Biz Growth Podcast. You'll find this episode's show notes at sarahcentacroce.com forward slash episode 37. To find out more about Laura, you can go to www.laurapainstanley.com or her Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Laura Payne Stanley. If you're listening to this show on a mobile device, you can click on the description and you'll actually find all the clickable links in there. So I don't have to spell them all out. Thanks so much for listening. This is Sarah Santa Croce signing off from the Introvert Biz Growth Podcast. Remember, you need to use your unique introverted superpowers in order to make a difference.